This is Planemaker Tutorial 21, and we're in Blender Part 7. In the last tutorial, we made a cube and put some textures on it. If you use that particular cockpit texture, it will map the texture across whatever object you've created, and you get your moving controls and moving instruments and everything, which is great news. But I'm sure you want to see more than just a cube as your cockpit. So that's what I'm going to get into next. This is a bit of a steep learning curve, so if I forget to cover something, please don't get too hard on me. Just uh, try to figure out Blender with the resources I mentioned earlier, with the wiki.blender.org, and so forth and so on. Basically, I need to have this plane back in the picture. So I can hit Shift and activate this layer, the fourth layer, and now I have both layers in this view. And I can also, if I remember I told you that because I'm on a laptop, I enabled the emulate numpad. Well, if I don't have numpad emulated, then I can go through and use the top row of number signs to go through all the layers that I'm working with here. And I can even hit shift and do the one shift four, and I get both layers displaying at the same time. Now notice here, whatever layer has content in it has a little dot on it. So that's a handy way that you can tell that there's content here. Okay, my goal here is now to load a new background image since I'm not particularly happy with the level of detail that we have been able to accomplish in Plane Maker. And I made this plane in Plane Maker also mainly to give X-Plane something enough to calculate the aerodynamic properties. Remember, whatever we create in Blender does not have any impact, any bearing on your plane's aerodynamics. So you could go ahead and make a fridge and it will fly like an Embraer as long as the Embraer is modeled properly in Plane Maker. What I want to do is I want to create at least this portion of the plane accurately, even if it's an external piece of the plane, in order for me to be able to model the inside of the plane very accurately. And what we need to do for that is we need to load up another background image, just like we did in Plane Maker. But in Blender, we have a little bit more flexibility if we do it right. In Blender, we can have one background image that depicts three views and we can rotate the plane around and have it line up to any of the three views that we want to use. So for example, I want to be able to see the front of the plane in one view, and I can hit Alt-Z to view the texture, and I want to see the side view, and I want to see the top view. I might have to offset the plane to accomplish this temporarily, but luckily this plane's center, you see this pink dot here, as if, if I have the plane selected, then that pink dot indicates where the center is. It's really easy to, for example, say I have to move the plane over to the side in order to get that three view that I want. It's really easy to get it back to the center. I can get the cursor to, to snap to the center by hitting Shift C. And then I can get the plane to snap to the cursor by hitting Shift S and saying Snap Selection to Cursor. So I'm back there. So I know that I now have this flexibility to move the plane offset in top view. And what that will help me do is it will help me position the background images in such a way that if I hit 3, it looks like it's right in the center of the screen. If I hit 7, it's offset to the side and it might line up to the background image that I have here. And then if I hit Shift 1, I can have the plane offset to the other side. And I could potentially put the front view of the plane here. So I have all three views at my disposal and I can use the three views to really accurately and pretty quickly model the parts that I need. And once I'm done I can just move the plane back to the center and we're good to go again. So what I need to do is I need to take that PDF file, that brochure that I downloaded a while back and made the other background pictures we used for Plane Maker with and I'm going to reload that into Photoshop and we're going to do the tweaks necessary to make it happen. So here we go, here's the spec sheet for the ERJ140. I'm going to open it in Photoshop and I'm going to say I want it to be a resolution of 500 pixels per inch. So it's going to create a quite a large size image. So make sure you have the resources to be able to do this. And once it's loaded up, I can delete the stuff that I don't need. I'm going to crop it from the 50% line on. I'm going to say image crop. So now we have a smaller image to work with. And I'm also going to delete this side of this document in order for myself to have more room to sprawl out a little bit here. So what I should probably do first is tip this image so that the nose is pointing upwards. Because remember when we were in Blender, top view shows the nose pointing upwards. So take this, select it, hit Command T on the Mac or Control T on the PC, rotate it by 90 degrees using the Shift key to snap it to the nearest uh, set of degrees. And then I'm going to move it closer to this edge. Okay, next I'm going to select 
only this plane here, and I'm going to yank it out of that uh, square that it was in. And then I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to hit Control T or Command T on the Mac. And I can flip it around simply by putting a minus in front of the width there and clicking on the check mark here to confirm. And then I want to move this one here over to the other side uh, with the only the necessary parts selected. And I need to make sure that it's lined up properly. So let me temporarily just drag it on top of this one and zoom in a little bit so that we can tweak the alignment. And uh, the good thing about this one is that you can look at the back wheels and see if the contact point that touches the ground is the same on both images. And then we know we have them pretty much lined up perfectly. Now I can use the uh, command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC and then the shift key will keep it aligned just where I have it resized so I can't move it up or down. And this alignment may not work but I'm going to do that for now just until we can figure out exactly how we need to align it. So I know also that I can move this thing closer to that plane but let me just delete these before we go on. We may need these measurements but we can always look them up later. Okay so now I, I select this image again and I pull it over so that the tip of the wing is pretty much perfectly aligned with the nose of the plane. So after I've cleaned up the residue, I can go ahead and crop it, not too tight because we need to probably make some more adjustments to this before it will actually really work perfectly in Blender as a background image. But I'm going to go ahead and crop it and then I'm going to export it and see how it lines up for us. So I hit save here and I go, I'm going to save it as 3-in-1, I already made one earlier. And now we go back into Blender and we load up that image. How do we do that? We go to View and we say Background Image and we click on Use Background Image and click on Load. And I can middle click on it and it will load up in the background. Whoa, that's tiny. But uh, we can increase the size by going to the size thing. And here's one principle about Blender that this is a good opportunity to teach you about. Basically, you have in Blender all these numbers, numeric uh, edit points, can be either increased by pressing an arrow key. I should switch to 3 to side view so that I can align it with the side view uh, first that will probably be a bit quicker. Okay so this looks like it's the right size it's just or about the right size it's just not lined up properly so I've also got some tools here to fine-tune uh, the tweaks. It's still a little too small so I can go bigger and this is too big now so it's uh, 36.5 I can also enter numbers numerically by clicking on the center of this field and then I can enter in the number with a keyboard or I can use this as a slider and slide it around if I click and hold on it it becomes a slider and I can move the numbers around like that so where I had it was about 36.5 and now it looks like it's pretty much the right size and then I can move it down a little bit by Y offset and now we've got the plane pretty much lined up. And this is going to be really handy later on. So it's really worth going through the effort of doing this. Now let's line up the plane so that we can see it in top view. We are going to have to go back to Photoshop because as you can tell, the plane is too low. And if I move it forward and backwards like this, it's going to affect the alignment that we had in side view. So I'm going to have to go back to Photoshop to move this up by a complete wingtip length. So wherever this wingtip ends, I'm going to move it up uh, by that amount. And now if we hit Shift 1, we're pretty close to having it perfectly aligned with the front view. And I would just have to tweak it again in Photoshop, nudge it over maybe a couple of, of pixels to make it line up perfectly in front view. So let me go back to Photoshop and do just that. Instead of loading it up again here, I'm just going to hit the Reload button. And we saw this thing jump up and we saw this thing move sideways. So now after having made all of my perfect tweaks, I can see that it's pretty much perfectly aligned with the background image. And this gives me the confidence I need to model the plane as a highly detailed, accurate representation in Blender. So now the Shift 1 key gives me the front view, the 3 key gives me the side view, and the 7 key gives me the top view. And this has now set the stage for us to be able to build a high quality cockpit. And, for that matter, uh, to redo the whole plane as a really highly detailed and high quality 3D model that we can superimpose on the model we had in Plane Maker. This is all we'll have time for in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I want to concentrate on creating this cage here from exterior perspective. And then we can start building the interior of the cockpit in a highly detailed fashion. As always, please rate, please sign up, please spread the word. Together, I think we can make X-Plane the most fantastic simulator out there. 
I hope you stick around for the next couple tutorials.